What's going on everybody? My name is Jordan Davis and today's video is going to be a walk around of my 1997 Jeep Wrangler. So to get started, this is a 1997 Jeep Wrangler. It's a TJ. I bought it about five years ago. And since then, I've pretty much gone over every nut and bolt on the Jeep. I've changed pretty much everything. There's only a handful of things that I haven't touched, but pretty much everything's been gone through. About three years ago when I started to really dig into this Jeep, I decided that I wanted to run bigger tires, so I knew I needed bigger axles. And that's kind of where the build process started for me. I was trying to figure out what I needed to run 37s. I live in Florida, there's not much wheeling, so I didn't know very much about Jeeps when I started building this. Everything that I've done has pretty much been self-taught, so there's a learning process along the entire way. And that's kind of why I want to change some stuff is now that I know better and know different things and know how to fabricate some stuff better you know i can actually do that or i can turn out a better quality product than i did when i was learning how to do it so the jeep actually has the factory four liter in it still it's got just over 100,000 miles so it, it still does really well it still runs really good i haven't really had any problems with it the transmission is an aw4 out of a 98 cherokee I did that so that I could have a four-speed with overdrive rather than the three-speed automatic that came with it. The transfer case is an MP231, came from the factory. I went through it and put in a new chain and slipped the yoke eliminator on it, and that's pretty much the bulk of the drivetrain. So a lot of the questions I get asked are about steel, and if you haven't already found out, the Jeep is entirely coated with steel from top to bottom. Steel, if you don't know, is a paint or a coating that is, it's polyurethane based, but it's got stainless steel flake in the paint. And that gives it a really good bond to bare metal if you coat it right. If you do your prep right, it gives it a, a really tough and durable bond to the actual metal. You can actually weld right through the paint. It's not like any of the other cheap weldable primers or anything like that. This stuff is for real. You can weld right through it. It's easy to clean. It's easy to maintain. It's a superior product over powder coating in my opinion. You can't really touch up powder coating with Jeeps like this. You know, we rock crawl and, and bash them into things. So chips, dings, dents, all of that kind of stuff is pretty much going to happen. So seal it makes it really easy to touch all that up with their airsoft hands. Moving along with the exterior of the Jeep, um, pretty much all of the armor on the Jeep is from Motobuild. I contacted those guys a couple years ago and went up there because I've got family pretty close to where they are in Alabama. And I went and picked up a bunch of parts from them. Of course, everything's coated to steel, but from the Highline front fenders to the back half kit of the frame, everything is from them. The rear corner guards were blanks that I cut myself. I have one of the fuel cells in the rear. I've got the back half kit uh, for the frame. The rock sliders are pretty new to the market. They're a boat side that are super beefy. They take some serious abuse. 
and I'm really impressed with the fitment and the quality of everything that they produce. They're probably one of the most innovative companies on the market. They do a lot for older Jeeps and they do a lot for newer Jeeps, but you know, right now they're building a YJ and it's absolutely insane with what they're doing with it and the products that they're releasing to the market that you can go buy right now. So the axles are actually Dana 44s out of a JK Rubicon, and yes, I get a lot of hate for running 40s on them. <laughs> Probably not the smartest move, but they've held up well for me. When I built the Jeep, I only built it for 37s. I bought the axles intending to do 37s, but when I figured I was literally replacing every part on the axles and decided to upgrade them as much as they could be, I decided to just do 40s. I knew I wanted to run 40s, but I knew it wasn't going to happen anytime soon, so I figured I'd go ahead and buy the tires and run them on the axles that I have. The past two years, the Dana 44s have actually held up really well. I've only had one hiccup in the rear. Now, the rear I did have an issue with, the Ox Locker. Uh, back last year at Ralph Creek, I was on a line that I shouldn't have been on to begin with. Spider gears on the inside of it just blew up, just grenaded the entire rear end. So, other than that, they've been pretty good to me. Turns out I need something bigger. So, I'm going to be doing some bigger axles here in the near future. The front axle, I actually cut it into three pieces and turned the C's. Normally, there's about six degrees of separation between the C's and the pinion, and I turned it so that there's about ten and a half. After I cut the axle into three pieces, I put a sleeve on the outside of it, put a truss on top of that, and basically any bracket that I could get from Artec to beef up the axles, I did. I ended up custom making a track bar bracket. And the track bar is actually all the way outside of the coilover mounted to the C on the passenger side. I made that bracket to get the track bar as close to parallel and as close to the same length as the drag length as I could. And it turned out really well. I think there's only about a, a degree or two of difference in the angle of those two pieces of steering linkage. And it drives phenomenal. It's smooth down the road. There's virtually zero bump steer. You don't feel it. Even before I put the hydro assist on, it drove like a dream. So the lockers in the axles are actually from Ox Locker. At the time, I wanted to run their cable system, but when I talked to them on the phone and asked a bunch of questions, they kind of sold me on their air kit. So both of them are run off of CO2 actually, rather than an air compressor. So it's super reliable. I can run like a 20 ounce paintball tank and I got it mounted into the front seat and it allows me probably two, two or three thousand on offs for each locker. So they last a long time. The CO2 cans are super cheap to fill up. So it was just the way to go. It's, it's a little more reliable than an air compressor. You turn the tank on and flip the switch and you're good to go. So the rear axle is a Data 44, nothing special to it. It's got a 35 spun locker, 35 spun chromoly shaft from 10 Factory. The gears in the front, I went with the best of the best. I went with Yukon's. They have their Yes Plan warranty, which absolutely made the deal for me, knowing that something could break. I wanted a warranty, and Yukon was where it was at. So another question I get asked a lot about is the front bumper. I custom built that front bumper from scratch and my goal with the front bumper was to relocate the steering box. The front of the Jeep is stretched five inches forward so you can't really do that with a, uh, the steering box in the factory location. So what I did was I made brackets for the steering box to put it where I wanted it. I stripped the frame all the way down to bare metal and took the cross member out of it and I put that steering box right where it works for me. There's a couple kits on the market to do that, but if you can install one of those kits, why not make your own? So I dove into it and I made the brackets. 
And after I made the brackets and put the steering box right where I wanted it, I ended up having just enough room to sink the winch in between the frame rails as well. So the frame rails are actually the two pieces on the outside that are built over and the winch and the steering box are in between the frame rails sitting on a, a winch plate that I made for the winch. And the, the bumper is super stubby. It makes an awesome approach angle with about five inches of front stretch. I just put it together piece by piece. Nothing too special. Put some heavy duty hooks on the front. I think it's like three quarter plate that I use. Welded it all up and I absolutely love it. I got a lot of questions on it and you know, it's, it's custom. It's one of those things that is different and you don't see on many Jeeps. I took inspiration from a lot of different bumpers that I've seen and that I wanted to run, but I knew with that front stretch I couldn't do it. So making one was my best option and I'm glad I did. So the suspension on the Jeep is a rock collar extractor kit. I started with that for the control arms and it's a five inch rear stretch, which I ended up stretching again. But a five inch rear stretch and then I ended up stretching the front five inches as well. So it had a 102 inch wheelbase before I redid it all. And I was really happy with it. It performed really well. 10 inches of stretch is huge on a TJ. I ended up pairing Fox coilovers with those. They're 2.0s. The front has 16 inches of travel. The rear has 14. I stuffed those in there and have been overall pretty impressed with them. I think they really need some tuning to get the valving right because they're pretty stiff. But other than that, I've been pretty happy with them. So the rear, I actually ended up stretching a second time. I was at 102 inches and I ended up pushing it back to 108 inches, which is where it's at right now. The 108 inches is pretty close to where I want to be. I want to, I want to get that front stretched a little bit more, which I'm going to be doing here in the future. But I'd like to end up around 112, 113. But right now that 108 is, is where it's at. Every time I stretch this Jeep, it's, it's been an improvement. The suspension is one of the things that I've changed around quite a bit. But one thing that has remained the entire time that I'm absolutely impressed with is the crawler joints in the control arms. The rock crawler kit that I bought initially had super beefy inch and a quarter crawler joints. And that's one thing that I have kept. I've been really impressed with them. They are solid. Just keep them greased and they're good to go. They don't make any noise. They're, they're super tough and I've been really impressed with them. So I don't see changing from those anytime soon. The base of the kit is the X-Factor kit. So it's got their center section for the, the frame rails and skid plate. So they fit right into it, the joints fit right into it, and it puts all the, the geometry right in the right place. So when I was shopping wheels and tires, I came across the brand new Mickey Thompson Baja Boss and they look sweet. I've owned pretty much every tire on the market from Nittos, Toyos, Coopers. I've owned pretty much all of them, whether it's a truck or a Jeep. And the Mickey Thompsons are the best tire that I've ever owned by far. Traction is unmatched. They perform really well on and off the road. I've put them through some hell and put them through quite a, quite a variety of different terrains over the last two or three years. And I, I have no complaints. They're, they're the best tire that I've ever owned. I've got those wrapped on some Dirty Life Race Speed Locks. They are the brand new Canyons. They're pretty new to the market. Mine are all machined aluminum. I came about this close to painting them with steel it, but the machined aluminum look, once I got them in, man, they just look sharp. I think the aluminum look, the raw aluminum, unfinished on the Jeep, I think it just stands out and it gives it a pop. I absolutely love the way they look. They hold up really well. They've taken some good abuse and I've got no complaints with them. The next thing I get asked about the most is the dashboard. 
The dashboard is one of my favorite pieces on the Jeep. I've learned how to make everything on this Jeep from scratch. So the dashboard is what I'm most proud of. It took me about two months to make from start to finish, from cardboard templates to bolting it in finished product. I knew I needed some extra legroom, so I started with the steering column. I ended up lifting it up a couple inches and pushing it back towards the firewall a couple inches. So that made the world of a difference right there. Then I started with just cardboard and templated everything out. I had a bunch of ideas in mind from looking on forums and looking online at custom dashes. And I looked at a lot of like the Ultra 4 buggies and stuff like that and trophy trucks and everything that would have a custom dash in it I looked at. And this is kind of what I came up with. It allowed me the most room. It allowed everything on the dash that I wanted. It. I've still got extra room to put stuff if I need to. And of course, it's all coated in steel. Uh, most of it is 16 gauge steel. Uh, the top plate on the top of the dash and the gauge cluster panel is actually aluminum. Everything else is steel. I kind of just made everything to fit and this is what I turned out. I had an old iPad laying around and so I figured why not throw it in the dash. I ended up buying a mob armor tablet mount and bolted it right in so it's not coming out. The rear just has some crawl tunes marine head, uh, speakers in the top. They're just mounted to the cage. They're a pretty small company, but I'm really impressed with the, the quality of what they've produced. They've held up to some rain and, you know, spraying them off when I wash the Jeep. So, those are really awesome. So in the back, I've got a Moto Belt 19 gallon fuel cell kit with their mounts and everything. And let me tell you, the quality is top notch. I had a lot of issues with the fuel cell that I had in the back in the past. It was just a custom made tank and I had a lot of issues with it, you know, leaking here, leaking there, the mounts weren't great, you know, I had a couple uh, fittings on the top that didn't stay secure and I ended up calling Dan up at Motorbilt and they sent me their 19 gallon fuel cell kit, came with the mounts and everything and I've been extremely happy with that. I actually brushed it, um, so it's got a brushed aluminum look to it, which is super nice. I shopped around for a long time for seats and I, I called some different buddies that had seats and I sat in them and I had trouble finding something you know, that, that fit my budget and was comfortable and durable and I came across PRP and let me tell you what, the best bang for your buck that you will find out there. I have the PRP daily drivers in there matched up with their 4.3 harnesses and there's nothing special to them. It's just the bare bones, bare model, daily driver seats. I've had the Jeep on its side and the bolsters on the seat keep you nice and snug in there. The harnesses are the 4.3s, so they're super wide, super beefy, they're big padded, they are comfortable. I was really impressed with the quality of their, their storage bags. I run a lot of their stuff is just stuffed in my cage with the, the bags. And I keep some tools in them and I got a lot of extra bags in my tool in my tool kit. And they're super durable. They're pretty water resistant, so I just take them out and spray them off. I've been really happy with them. So the rest of the rear, something I get a lot of questions on is uh, the floor in it. It's something that you really don't know unless you look inside the Jeep, but the entire floor has been replaced. I knew I wanted to make something that was unique to the Jeep, and I ended up making the entire floor is all 16 gauge steel and the siding is all aluminum panels that are riveted in there and it's all raw aluminum, it looks super clean, I'm really impressed with how it came out. It's just something different, it allowed me some more room for the coilovers. Running a JK axle, it's not near as wide as a one ton so I need a little more room so I ended up making more room in the body and that, that really helped. I think that just about covers everything that I've done to the Jeep. If you've got any more questions that I didn't cover, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you want to know and I'll get back to you. You can also message me on Instagram and I'll try to get back to you there. I've got a lot of changes coming to the Jeep in the next couple months and I'm pretty excited to use YouTube as a tool to document all of that. So keep an eye out for the next video. It's gonna be more of a build series rather than wheeling videos. So I'm going to have a lot of different install videos and 
changes that I'm doing to the Jeep covered all on here. Please subscribe to the channel. I'd love your support that way. And until next time, thank you guys for watching Recoil Off-Road.